Hey guys, Saka here and I want to do a quick breakdown for the new build I will be playing. Now before we get into that, I just want to quickly say, no, my last uh, split arrow assassin has not ripped. It is still alive, it's level 91. I just got a little bit bored of mapping on it. After you've played three split arrow builds back to back, especially when you go from raider to pathfinder to assassin, the clunkiness starts to shine. The build feels perfectly fine, it clears stuff absolutely no problem at all. But it doesn't have the visual just epicness of the shatters on the Doomfletch build with the Herald of Ice. And it doesn't have the movement speed of the Raider. So after just a straight day of mapping, I want a side project to work on. So this is my side project, the Detonate Dead Prolif Elementalist. Now, Detonate Dead has always been one of my favourite skills. And it's been a build that I've been wanting to play basically since beta. I first started playing Detonate Dead back uh, in, the day, in the days of multiple fire traps. Um, before you could have multiple fire traps and they wouldn't share cooldowns. So you could have four fire traps, you just piano key them to start the like rotation, and then you start detonating dead the second one thing um, dies. That's just before Desecrate even became a skill. Um, and that was how the build used to function. Now, once they um, tied traps to have their own like universal cooldown, and you could no longer have multiple of the same trap. That kind of killed Detonate Dead for quite a long time. Didn't really come back until Desecrate became a thing. Now, I haven't actually played Detonate Dead since then. So, nearly every patch, every league, whenever I've been thinking, oh, what build do I want to play next? I always sort of lean towards, oh, maybe you could try Detonate Dead again. Now, one of my viewers um, knew that I was talking about Detonate Dead. It was a few weeks ago I was talking about it on stream. And he said, oh, I was playing it last league and it was actually really powerful. And he'd made a few YouTube videos, they got on Reddit, of him farming Shaper and stuff, and it looks like a really solid character. So after talking to him some more, we're going to use his character as a base, since obviously I haven't played this kind of character since beta. I'm not too well informed on it. So we're going to use his character as a base to work from, and then sort of take it from there. So, the core concept is it's mind over matter, it scales as much fire damage as possible, we get corpses, we detonate corpses. Now, if you don't know how everything works, you'll basically set off both Desecrate and Desonate Dead. So, unlike before, where we would use the fire traps to um, kill stuff to generate corpses, we can now just use Desecrate itself. Now, Desecrate is a spell. It has charges. And the way it works is you cast the spell. As you can see, three little corpses by default pop up. And that is what gives us our like ammunition to start the detonation chain. Now, it has its own cooldown and own charge system. Now, to bypass this, um, the guy was using one self-cast desecrate and he was also using a spell totem desecrate. So what he can do is he can alternate from pack to pack, or if he knows he's going to be on a boss for a long time, much like the um, remote mine spell totem setup we used on the miner. If he's going to be in one area for a long time, he can drop the spell totem, which will cast Desecrate. He can cast Desecrate. And between those two, that's enough for you to do it. You can also have a Desecrate Trap, which will be something I'll try out. And I'll try out all these different setups. See which one just feels the most comfortable. But basically, you have a Desecrate to start off your chain reaction. One important thing to cover, the zone, as far as I'm aware, you create spawned corpses capped by the zone level. But... You will not create high level corpses unless you have a level to desecrate. So as you can see at level 19, that's when you create corpses up to level 100. Even if I was in a level 75 map, um, you would go, oh, well, you'll create level 75 corpses. If you only have a level 1 desecrate, you can only generate corpses up to level 20. So it's very important to have a high level desecrate. So if you're doing this as a league starter or solo self found, have a bunch of desecrates in weapon swap leveling up. Um, and just level as Flame Blast or Firestorm or whatever fire skull you want here. If you're playing mid to the end of the league, just buy a bunch of level desk crates off Peewee Trade. No biggie. So that's the core part. Second part, Detonate Dead. How does that work? So Detonate Dead does percentage damage. So explosions deal base fire damage equal to 6% of the corpse's maximum life. Because of this, Detonate Dead, once you have an appropriate desecrate, is always appropriate. The only time Death and Dead will do bad damage is if you're not igniting, if you're not running the chance to ignite gem, which we will be, if you're not running Prolif, or if you're an Uberlab. Now, Uberlab is an odd one because it has a very tanky um, boss with a relatively low level zone. 
So if you are planning on doing Ublab on this character without buying a boost because you're doing solo play or ethical found or whatever, you can just use Flame Blast or just a different setup to do your Ublab and then go back to normal. But for everything else, you'll be completely and utterly fine. Now, because it's percentage damage based on the zone, even if you are on a very budget um, gear setup, you'll always do good damage just because fire double dip, so you get the double dipping goodness and you get this raw percent damage which scales with the content that you do. Okay, so that's the core mechanics out of the way. So, with that in mind, how do we build the character? We go elementalist for obvious reasons. We are a prolif build. We want to be igniting things. So we go through, get Shepherd of Desolation. Every um, second cycles through buffs, not important. The main thing is getting Beacon of Rune, getting that prolif. So we drop the Desecrate. We detonate, big ignite. It spreads, everything dies. Insert annoying witch voice. Get Pendulum of Destruction, it gives us uh, a buff as it cycles through, giving us extra damage, extra AoE. But well, the main one is Mastermind of Discord. We really want the Fire Pen to get the largest ignites possible. This is all about getting the biggest ignites. So we go EE and Mastermind of Discord. We drop a Orb of Storms. We do Orb of Storms cast on hit. It debuffs the mobs with both the casts and then the negative pen from both Mastermind of Discord and EE. We get the giant ignite, the ignite prolifts, everything dies, insert which voice line here, and you're absolutely chilling. We go Mind of Madness, get good effective defense. This will be about a 6, 6.5k HP build, with about 3k plus mana. So you're looking like an effective, kind of, let's say, 8k with bad gear to 10k with good gear, which is pretty um, good. With the dual cast, you can go for dual offensive curses, or one offensive, one defensive. So you can either go like flammability, early weakness, or flammability and feeble, or flammability temp chains. So the survivability should be pretty solid. So with that in mind, just go through all the effective um, and efficient mana nodes, life nodes, get the AoE, get alchemist, get all the jewels for nice uh, scaling. Boom, boom, boom. Very clean, straightforward tree. Get the nice three point jewel. Get early overload. Early overload gets propped by our orb of storms. We drop orb storms anyway. Natural synergy. AoE, damage, life mana mana boom, 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 boom. the tree is really straightforward the only like weird pick is precision we take precision because we need dexterity it will fix our stat requirements and also the increased attack and cast we just makes the build feel smoother the plan is to go dual dorianis meaning we'll have to use the leap slam as our movement skill so the attack speed here is quite nice if you do go just one dorianis or just a scepter and a shield this will still make your shield charge feel better so this is a substantial clear speed increase the car speed makes the desecrates and the detonate dead feel better. It's good. We get all of these mana two pointers because mana is effective HP. So that's why we get both Righteous Decree, Dynamo, the mana into the three point jewel, the mana here, and all the mana here. Mana equals life. We get Skittering Runes because it's a dual curse build. Really straightforward. As for the setup, again, we're just going to be going off of Kronks. This was the viewer who saw me out to build in the first place. I'm going to use his setup to start and then deviate if I feel like improvements can be made elsewhere. And I'll also just quickly show a tiny bit of the gameplay so you get an idea of how it works. And I'll also leave a link to both his profile and his uh, shape of video in the description. So if you want to see it in more depth, you can. So this is phase three phase three of the shape of fight. And he's getting ready to lay down some desecrates. So you can see he's casting some desecrates, whipping the spell totem in. And now... He will drop an Orbstorm Spell Totem, and he'll wait for it, and you can start spam detonates. You can see how he just burns through the adds. So once the Prolif starts going off, everything goes, stuff sort of burns through, the damage is really there. Alright? Just turn down Diablo a little bit. So you get a, a basic rough idea of how it works. You create your corpses, you detonate your corpses, Ignite and Prolif happens. You then face tank shape of beam, feels good man, and you have to waste the portal. But you get an idea for how the basic sort of concept works. Now, his setup was a Combs Heart for HP, makes a lot of sense, also gives you fire damage, fire damage double dips, dual Dorianis, and then he was using a 4 link detonate dead in his helm, um, with the essence craft for 30% more elemental damage. 
Obviously, 30% more elemental damage is very good scaling. This means you can get away with running at combs and not feeling screwed out of fact you're using a falling. The only bad thing about this is Pox's RF build has been a lot of traction recently. So if you can't afford the essences to get the 30% more damage, you could run a staff, uh, like a budget five link um, staff setup. This is also a good way until you can get the combs, until you can get the Dorianis, and that will see you as a nice little stepping stone. If you're playing this um, in Legacy, you can get the Relic Searing Touch to have an overpowered leveling item because you're level with fire damage. And then you can use that into early end game while you build up currency. But your core Fallic setup will be Detonate Dead, Increased AoE for Mapping, Use Conquer Effect for Bossing, Chance to Ignite because this is a non-crit build, and Fire Pen. Really straightforward. Everything else is just sort of utility setups. So he's running a Leap Slam, 4 to 5 fast attacks. If you're using a shield, change the Leap Slam for a shield charge. Floating Lightning Golem, just because Lightning Golem gives him attack speed and cast speed. Really nice quality of life. With a Spell Totem Desecrate, because we covered, we need to create Desecrates. Curse on hit, Orb of Storms, pick your favourite two curses. He went Flammability and Feeble. If you can go Flammability and Elite Weakness, you can go Flammability Temp Chains. You can use Ellie Weakness, go whatever. Use a defensive, offensive, double offensive, double defensive, blah. Desecrate, Molten Shell, Cast on Damage Taken, Arctic Breath. Not a massive fan of that setup, but it's a setup. He's got an Opal Ring, and the gearing is get generic fire damage where you can, get dual Opals if you can, get life, get mana. Get life, get mana on as many pieces as possible. And if you can, get yourself a very nice talisman, which will give you some double dipping action, or just fix up your stat requirements. For the flask setup, a wise oak would obviously be very powerful to get the extra penetration. Dying sun as he has here. AoE is good in AoE builds. Surprising. You don't need the ruby flask, because as we've already covered, Destinate Dead is immune to reflect. So you don't need the ruby flask to help you against reflex, just if you can get the extra AoE, you'll have better clear. But yes, there'll be a link to both the video and the profile description. If you have any more questions, leave them down below. And this is what I will be playing next. And I'm really looking forward to playing Destinate Dead again. And yes, if this does turn out to be a bit too clunky, if this just doesn't feel quite right after the AoE changes, I will turn this into a Mind Over Matter Explosive Arrow character. The tree requires about a 10 point difference i could literally just go with this tree as is if i did change the six place of arrow i would probably want to pick up barbarism for more maximum fire res but i could literally just take this exact tree and be completely and utterly fine but yes i'm taki have a good day bye bye